Yo, what is going on guys? Jack here, and today I've got for you guys episode 21 of our Eastside Hockey Manager Early Access Let's Play here with the Maple Leafs, and today we are going to be kicking off our playoff campaign. If you don't know how the playoffs work, um, the way I've been doing them is I live come the elimination games. So we have got that to look forward to. Of course, last episode, uh, I kind of ended things with us securing... Uh, a playoff spot since then I have wrapped up the season just so you guys can see how kind of the standings finished I guess we finished with uh, 60 wins and uh, 19 losses and three overtime slash shootout losses from our 82 games a win percentage is 75% which is really really decent really uh, you can see here of our 60 wins uh, 56 of them came in regulation kind of time with uh, a few in overtime and as you can see here if we look at the go goals for we actually got 171 goals for for 164 goals against so to put that into perspective it's the best defensive record in both conferences uh, you can see here the other conference however uh, wild did score the same amount of goals as we did but you can see here uh, the wild topped their conference on 111 points you can pause it here if you want to see where everyone finished um, worth noting that the Stars and the Ducks, of course, we have the picks off finished second and fourth, which was a little bit disappointing. But if we look at the kind of um, Eastern Conference, you can see here uh, we did really well in the end. And we finished on 123 points, which was the highest points total of any team in the competition. Anyway, just a quick look at how the player kind of table stats and look. I believe this doesn't include the playoffs. I may be wrong there, but you can see here. Kessel and JVR finishing with way over 100 points each. Kessel with 119 points in 71 games. Absolutely redonkulous stats there. And uh, yeah, that was really pleasing. So that's kind of what's been going on there. You can have a look at our fixtures in the playoff here. We are taking on the Red Wings today in our first elimination game. You can see here we've won the first three games of the series so far. So we'll take a look at them real quick. So the first game was a 3-2 win in overtime. Kessel grabbing us the big goal, of course. Worth noting that in the playoffs you do not have... Um, you don't have um, kind of the shootout, so it goes straight to just overtime 20 minute kind of periods you can see here this game we took the lead early on that was really really pleasing i believe we went 2-0 up before um slipping away so yeah 2 nothing up we went there panic grabbing the goal but the red wings did bounce back you can see here they got one goal through name nikov i guess uh, and then they got another, which was really worrying. This one came uh, in the third. The previous one came in the second. And this saw it go to overtime, but we did eventually grind out a win. It was a really long highlight into the build-up to this goal. I don't know if we're going to see the long highlight, but let me tell you, I was on the edge of my seat. I was nervous. You can see there Kessel breaking away. One-on-one -one with the goaltender, and a great little finish for him to take the first game 3-2. In the second game, uh, similar kind of game really, it went to overtime, it went the distance, this time Bozak getting us the all-important goal, a player who's been really solid for us so far this year. You can see uh, he's got 75 points in 67 games for us. He got the big one here. Also worth noting Shaw grabbing two goals. Andrew Shaw come big in this series so far. Uh, you can see in the playoffs he's got two goals and four assists in the three games. So he's been a big man for us. And we're a player who is certainly going to be someone to keep an eye on going into today's games potentially. I say games because it could be more than one. I'm hoping we're just going to win this series in a clean sweep 4-0. But you never know how things are going to go. Uh, anyway, the last game in the series was a 2 nothing win. Kessel and Booth grabbing the goals for us. Both goals came in the first period. Really pleasing in the end uh, to win this game so convincingly. Good to see us stay solid at the back, particularly having conceded four in the previous game. You can see Kessel getting a trademark goal there for us. And then, as I mentioned, I think it was Booth got the second goal for us, which saw us go home. Uh, and that was Shaw with the assist there too. So all in all, things looking pretty solid for us. Looking at our playoff stats here, you can see looking at the points total, Shaw leading the way. But Kessel also doing a fantastic job. Four goals so far in this series, hoping for more from him. Booth also chipping in well. It's good to see that despite in the kind of regulation and kind of the regular season, I guess, um, us relying so much on our first line, the likes of Shaw, Booth, Panic uh, and Percy, you know, they're contributing, they're doing stuff on the puck for us. And that is very, very pleasing. And it puts a little bit less pressure perhaps on the likes of Bozak and Reemstike, who haven't done a lot so far this series. Um, well, they've done a lot, but not relative, I guess, to what you might expect from them. They've got three points each. 
So yeah, things are looking pretty good there. In terms of just a little bit of news, the one thing I do want to talk about is the player development system in EHM at the moment. And I'm not sure if this is a bug or an issue that's look been like a known issue and been looked at, but I thought I'd show you anyway. But I commented on last episode about how my players weren't improving. In uh, Football Manager, players' attributes kind of fluctuate regularly. You'll see players' attributes change and improve. Or go down I guess on a week by week basis. In this game I've not been seeing those changes. What I've noticed is weird spikes in attribute changes. So an example I have here is Conor McDavid. I wish I could get up a screenshot of him last episode because I talked about how he hadn't developed. But in the space of a week, I think all on the same day really, loads of his attributes shot up and I think that the thing that I think is causing this is the current ability of Conor McDavid isn't gradually increasing week by week, and I guess this is a universal issue perhaps of all players, but it seems like it just jumped all of a sudden. So the likes of his speed attribute went up by three, his acceleration went up by two in a week, having not improved for months. So that was a little bit bizarre, but you can see here he is looking like an absolutely cracking player. Cannot wait to have him in our ranks next year. He looks like he's going to just be a fantastic player for us. Of course, got that first line potential, but... He's looking great. Pylon, not or Pylon, not developed a ton, and neither has Cruz yet. But as I mentioned, if this spiking issue is a thing, who knows? Maybe it'll shoot up all of a sudden soon. Uh, Nylander has developed a fair bit this year. He actually had a slightly off year compared to last year. I look last year he got 32 points in 57 for us. This year in 48 he's only got 9. I do feel like perhaps taking him and putting him down in the Marlies affected him somewhat. So perhaps that's on my own kind of back that mistake and I should be the one feeling bad about it. But that's what's been going on with the team. We're going to get straight into today's playoff game against the Red Wings. Hopefully we can just win in really comfortable, convincing fashion and take this series 4-0. Or we will be continuing this episode to live con multiple games because all these games are now elimination games. And that is not the start I want. The Red Wings gain a power play early on and they make it 1-0 with just 3 minutes on the clock. And now we have to fight back. And that's something we've not had to do a ton in this kind of series so far. Uh, in terms of against the Red Wings, I think we've taken the lead in pretty much every game. So this could be a bit of a test of our character. Of course, we did win two games by overtime. So both of those games, it felt like we were kind of being pegged back by the Red Wings. So I'm hoping that we can get ourselves back into this game. Although they are on the attack here. They're dumping the puck deep and it will find its way to Nyquist. Who sets up for Dash Datsyuk, I guess. And he finds the back of the net. The Red Wings, of course, we met in the playoffs last year at this exact same stage. Which is a little bit bizarre. I think this is now that kind of their 24th or 25th straight year of qualifying for the playoffs. So they are a very experienced team. They're not going to make things easy for us here. And in the second, um, not in the second, sorry, in the second, not a lot happening. In the third here, we need some kind of comeback. We need a miracle, although the Red Wings on the attack and they score and make it 3-0. And, well, I don't know about you, but I kind of feel like any tactical change I make now is probably not going to make a massive difference. We're going to do something anyway. We're going to play on overload, change our forward and defensive usage to try and get our best players on the ice for as long as possible. So we'll see how this goes. But we need a massive comeback here in the third. Although we are on the attack, can the puck be pulled back? It can be. Kessel lights the lamp. JVR and Bozak involved in the build-up. And we have pegged one back, but there is not a lot of time really here for us to get some more goals. Though, there is a chance, although it looks like it could be the Red Wings. It is the Red Wings. Name stick Nikov, I guess. Getting the goal from them there makes it 4-1. And it looks like this is going to be going beyond the four games which I was hoping for. The whistle goes, the, the horn sounds, and... Well, the series is now 3-1. The Red Wings are going to be looking to launch a comeback, but they won that game quite convincingly. Of course, they did have home advantage, which is something they didn't have for the first two games of the series, which, of course, both went to overtime. However, in the kind of game prior to this one where we won 2-0 or 2-0, that was at the Red Wings' kind of venue. So that's a little bit concerning. Looking at the other series so far, a lot of 2-1s going on. The Penguins leading Boston 2-1, the Lightning leading the Habs 2-1, of course, worth noting. The Lightning, of course, the holders of the Stanley Cup in this save. You can also see here the Kings leading 2-1, and it uh, looks like the Preds are leading 2-1 too. So lots of games going the distance. You can see here the Pens' uh, Boston series is tied at 2-2, as is the Ducks' Preds game. Uh, the Stars are leading the Blues 3-1 as well, which might be a little bit of a surprise. The Blues have a very, very strong roster. 
But anyway, we're just going to focus on ourselves now. Looking at it, you can just see a quick kind of scout report of the Red Wings. They play a versatile and flexible game. They're a tactically strong team. And they have very good goaltending, which of course is going to kind of be a task, test and a task for us. Because uh, our main strength, I guess you could argue, is just our go raw goal scoring capabilities. Anyway, looking at it here, I'm pretty happy with the team my assistant has picked. Fowler, Yarmerson, JVR, Bozak and Kessel, our first kind of line of players. Percy and Gartner leading the way behind. Worth noting these two younger kind of defensemen. You can see here Stuart Percy looking like a very good player with one to two potential. I need to get him a face. I need to make add him in our game with a face for next episode, if I remember. Gardner has also done very well, Jake, here. Uh, you can see Booth, Shaw, and Panic on our second line. Players who have contributed in the series so far, but were very quiet last game. We are now at home again, of course, for this fifth game of the series. It's 3-1 to ourselves. But it's not going to be easy. We need to make things happen here in the first. Not a lot happening early on. At least we haven't conceded in the first three minutes like we did last time. Of course, we are in our darker jersey here. And we're on the attack. And the rebound is capitalised on by Kessel. We make the most of the power play. And, um, well, Desperes, I think it was there on the uh, well in the penalty box for them. We're on the attack again. Can we make some magic happen before the end of the first? Ten seconds left. We do have a face-off in their zone. Can we make the magic happen? It's going to be short, trying to win it for us. He wins it. Saved again by uh, Howard in net for the Red Wings. But there's still a chance. Four seconds left. Can we make something happen? A goal here could be big. It could change perhaps the complexion going into the second. It's going to be Sill to win it. And that is an absolute rocket by Gardner. Just hits it home from the face-off. And we take a 2 nothing lead into the second. Great start, exactly what we needed, especially after last time. And well, we're on the attack again here. This time, is that um, Johnson out wide on the left? It is. And um, well, we're going to be putting on our strongest line here in terms of our forwards. Can they make something happen? Uh, worth noting, it is a three on one, or sorry, three on five situation here, even for the Red Wings. So we've got to make this man advantage count if we can. And we can. Kessel scores. The, uh, I guess, is it a double power play if they have two players in the penalty box? Essentially, we had the two-man advantage. We made it count. We've made it 3-0 here. This is looking very comfortable. Quite a contrast to the previous game where, of course, well, it, it was worrying, wasn't it? It was um, the Red Wings really showing us up, winning 4-1. We are having to make a few saves here, or Bernier is rather. But um, the Red Wings going to have to launch a late assault here into the third one. Well, they've got one there. That is worrying. Smith reduces the goal deficit to two. And, um, but yeah, we're in the third here. We've got a pen penalty um, power play, but we've ta had two, actually, and we've not made anything of them. And a third, which nothing happens from. But time is slipping away here. That is not a bad thing. Looking at it, well, they're going to be a man down here, the Red Wings, for the rest of this um, game. So... Uh, well, unless they can score two. So we should be home and dry here. Just 90 seconds left on the clock. 3-1 up. Looks like we are going to be taking this series 4-1. Um, some good performances at home really made the difference. But uh, we fought hard here. The Red Wings haven't made it easy for us. But we've got some good goals here. We've perhaps not made as much of the kind of power plays as I'd like. But nevertheless, we're still way in control of this game. Just a minute left. And we've performed very well. We are 3-1 up. We are having a giraffe. The fans are celebrating in the stands. They know that this game is over. And, um, well, it seems like the Red Wings do too as we just try and kill some time off on the boards. That's game. 16 seconds left. No chance of the Red Wings grabbing two whilst on the power play. We've done it. We've reached the stage at which we met. Well, the stage that we reached last year, of course, this stage... Last year, we were, we were beating the Red Wings. We've done the same again this year. Next round, well, we'll have to see who we end up playing, of course. Last year, we got knocked out against the Boston Bruins in this next stage coming up. I'm hoping we can go one better this year. A great performance in the conference so far. And we take the series 4-1. to one. But anyway, that's going to wrap things up from you guys. I'm going to leave you with some suspense. I'm not going to let you know what the other results are going on, so you guys will have to tune in next time to find out who we play in the playoffs. Hopefully you guys are looking forward to that one. If you have enjoyed this video, smash the like button. If you've got any comments with regards to this series, leave them down below. And other than that, it is me, Jack. 
and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.